Hello everyone, I'm Joel and welcome to my channel. For those of you who are already subscribed or who watch my previous videos, welcome back. It's, it's the lockdown now in Manila, so I decided to use this time to uh, finally do a review of my bike here. It's the Tiger 900 GT low ride height version. People have been asking me to to make a review of this bike based on my experience riding it and owning it um, but I never really found the time so I guess now is the perfect time to do this I'm not a professional rider and I haven't been riding for a long time so I hesitate to call this a review of the Triumph Tiger 900 GT instead I would like to refer to this as my perspectives as an owner right of the Triumph Tiger 900 and I guess the best place to start this uh, sharing of perspectives would be background information I talk more about my experiences in riding motorcycles and how I began riding and how it transformed me in my introductory video but I'll put the link down below in case you'd like to uh, learn more about it or, or watch the video but for starters maybe I could just summarize uh, my riding experience so so uh, you, you could get a better perspective or a better context of uh, how wh where my reviews or where my views are coming from so I bought my first motorcycle a Triumph T100 in April 2019 and I started riding since then so in total I've really just been riding for a little over two years and so I really still consider myself a new rider uh, I wasn't too comfortable with the Bonneville T100 and so I switched it with a street twin and that street twin uh, did wonders for my riding it increased my experience levels exponentially and my confidence levels especially and uh, to the point that I finally realized that I wanted to go into the world of uh, adventure touring motorcycles. So that's when I finally uh, sold my Street Twin and bought this uh, Triumph Tiger 900 GT. Since I was relatively a new rider, I, I didn't want to, to, to jump into the, the world of the 1200 or 1250cc adventure motorbikes. So I decided to buy a mid-sized bike and uh, I, I checked the Triumph Tiger out and the, the, the dealer at that time Triumph Philippines had a low ride height version and I realized that uh, this was a, a perfect uh, situation for me because it would allow me to you know uh, first gain some foothold with respect to my confidence level in riding an adventure bike of course, it's, it's a mid-sized adventure bike, but it's still much bigger than, than uh, the other bikes I've ridden before. So it, 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 it was perfect in that area. And it allowed me the opportunity to increase that, the, the, the height as, I, as my experience level grew or as I realized its limitations. So as I was saying, I, I sold my street twin and bought this bike. And I have been riding it for around nine months now. And I've been riding it in various situations, dry weather, rainy situations, even really strong rains, uh, highway riding, regular city road riding, through traffic, and I've ridden it through gravel roads, uh, some mountain paths, um, fire roads, and uh, even through really soft, deep mud.
So one could say that I've managed to somehow test the capabilities of the Tiger 900 GT in various situations and with this background I can also say that the bike generally did not disappoint whether it be riding alongside a group of friends with larger CC bikes like the BMW 1250 GS in wet and dry road conditions or riding through rough paths. The GT version has four riding modes, namely road, rain, off-road and sport and I found this to be quite adequate. Some people who reviewed the bike did not like the fact that the system defaults to the road mode each time the ignition is turned on, but I personally do not see that as a problem, especially when you consider the fact that you would generally be using this bike on normal road conditions. However, a negative point for me was the fact that, although you can generally switch riding modes while the bike is in motion, it is not possible to switch to off-road and back while in motion. I can see the wisdom behind this limitation in that it forces the rider to take a pause before engaging in a totally different terrain. But it also meant that I was left behind by my GS riding friends as I had to stop before and after riding through rough roads. So what else can I provide in terms of background information for this video? Let me check my notes here. Okay, so personal information. So I'm 5'5 five, five and a half and I have an inseam of 30 inches. I guess what this means is that uh, in addition to beginner riders or new riders, shorter riders would also, could also find this, this video uh, helpful, I hope, right? uh, particularly with respect to, to how user-friendly the, the Tiger 900 is for, for those who don't have an inseam of 32 inches or more. So what I can also say in terms of uh, quick information regarding uh, this bike is that the low ride height version as well as I believe other models of the, the, the GT range have a, an option for an adjustable seat and that means that for the low ride height version at least the seat height can range from around 29.9 inches to 30.7 inches and so it's it's really a, a, a comfortable height so let me show you the adjustable seat of the low ride height version of the triumph tiger 900 and uh, this is i believe you can also use this seat for other gp models so here's the bottom of the seat and as you can see there are two uh, adjustable levers here which adjusts the height of the, the seat and for example here you can if you if you want to make it higher you, you just simply push it back and put it to the higher version and if you want lower you can just keep it there it's it's very simple you can do the same thing for for the lever right here and uh, as i said i believe you can purchase this seat and use it in uh, other GT versions, even the regular GT version. So there are a lot of things to play around with with respect to the Triumph Tiger when it comes to the, the, the height of the bike or the, the seat height of the bike. So we now go to the other side of the bike to find the manual spring preload adjustment. And this is it right here. The, the manual says that uh, for a single rider normal situation even for off-road uh, it suggests to keep this at the minimum which is basically the full anti-clockwise position moving it this way for example because as you move it anti-clockwise the gap right here above the suspension decreases so right now I have around full 15 clockwise rounds 
okay? And that gave me around half an inch of gap here above the suspension. So I, I started off with the, the manual suggestion of keeping it at the uh, most minimum level, which is basically the full anti-clockwise position. But as I rode through several rough roads, there, was a, there, there were at least two times when the bottom of my bike right here, you know, hit the ground. And uh, as my confidence level increased, I realized that I, I actually wanted it much higher. And so this is one of the features of the bike that, that helps new riders progress with the bike. As your confidence level increases and as you, you learn more techniques like the one foot down technique on the stop, you can consider increasing the height of the bike. So that's how you increase the height of the bike uh, suspension wise with an inseam of 30 inches I, I can actually flat foot this bike even with the higher seat version with a lot of room to spare or should I say with some room to spare so so that 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 adjustable height factor of uh, the GT version uh, really helped me to increase my confidence level in riding adventure motorbikes as well as my skill level. Indeed, the bike is very easy to handle and comfortable. A lady who reviewed the same model referred to it as an ADV bike that handles like a scooter and I totally agree with her. With a listed dry weight of 425.49 pounds, it is lighter than the Bonneville T100 which is around 470 pounds dry and even lighter than the accessible Street Twin, which is around 436.5 pounds dry. These figures easily translate to a very manageable experience, because I personally felt it to be much lighter and more agile than the T100, and almost as agile as a Street Twin. In fact, I felt more confident leaning the Tiger 900 GT in twisty roads than the Street Twin. Its seat is also very comfortable and its adjustable windscreen significantly reduces wind blasts on the highways, making it an ideal steed on long journeys. The Tiger 900 GT low version has the same features as the regular GT, which includes adjustable compression damping and rebound damping for the front suspension, and a rebound damping adjustment that complements the spring preload adjustment for the rear suspension. It doesn't have the additional features of the Tiger 900 GT Pro version, like the electronically adjustable suspensions, the five riding modes, the shift assist quick shifter, in the Triumph connectivity system, but it already gives me more than what I need for an enjoyable ride. There are a couple of negative points that have been noted about this bike and that I have myself experienced. So let me just point them out very quickly. The first is with respect to the vibrations that could be felt on the handlebar and some people say that that's because of the triple cylinder. I could say that I, I have myself been feeling it. Mm, people say that this is felt when you reach around 110 or 115 kilometers per hour. I would say that I tend to feel it more at around 120 to 130 kilometers. And oddly enough, I feel it more on the right uh, handle than on the left. But I wouldn't really call it as vibration. I would call it more like a buzzing sensation. So for me, it's not really an irritant. The second is with respect to the cooling fans on the left and on the right. 
Some say that these cooling fans eject heat directly to your legs. I personally did not feel excessive heat on my legs. Any heat I felt came more from the engine. But there was actually one instance where I felt the heat coming from these uh, fans. And that was when it rained really hard while I was on the road. And so my pants, although they were waterproof, they were they got soaked and then at the end of the highway I hit uh, massive traffic and so every time the fans activated I could really feel the heat uh, hitting my legs and it was quite uncomfortable but that was just that one instance so those are the concerns or issues that I've noted with respect to this motorcycle in addition to the point I raised earlier regarding the off-road mode. But in totality, I don't see them as major issues and they have not impacted my overall experience with respect to this bike, which is positive. One additional point that I want to make about this bike is that the sound of the exhaust just seems to get deeper as I continue to use the bike. And it's, it now really has a, a nice, deep grunt in it. So, how does one characterize the Tiger 900 GT Low? An adventure touring bike? An adventure bike that feels like a scooter? An 80-20 bike that can take you off-road when needed? For me, it can be considered all these. Because it has a wide room to adjust to your personal preferences. Other reviews have hesitated to call even the entry-level Tiger 850 as a beginner bike and I would agree with them primarily because of the size of the bike and the power that its engine can generate nevertheless I would regard it as a friendly agile and accessible motorbike a bike that can take out the intimidation that can come with the idea of high CC and large adventure motorbikes so that if your spirit truly seeks it it can open the door to a much larger world of experiences with a rhythm that allows you to progress at your own pace <laughs>